Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting episode here on the MI Gardener channel. This is going to be another complete growing guide on strawberries. Now strawberries uh, have to be probably one of our most uh, commonly requested growing guides and uh, and I don't know why we haven't done one already. Uh, we've been growing strawberries for quite a long time here on the MI Gardener channel and I know I've done lots of videos on them um, but I've never done a complete growing guide on one. So um, first off, I'm sorry. Second of all, Let's get into it. So uh, with strawberries, typically they will come bare root in uh, their dormant rhizome. Now strawberries are uh, much like much like asparagus, will have a, a dormant rhizome that they'll send up shoots from. And you can buy one year, two year, three year roots uh, when it comes to asparagus. However, with strawberries, you just buy strawberry uh, dormant strawberry rhizomes, and you get uh, basically whatever they are willing to sell you. So um, it really comes to the comes down to the supplier of how good the quality is. What I have found is that uh, with more of your reputable suppliers, uh, they will they will sell you a second year rhizome. So something that's going to fruit the second year. In a rare case, I did come across a supplier selling a first year rhizome. They're very, very dinky plants, don't have very good root growth, and uh, they're just small and they would be pathetic, so I sent them back. Um, and I will, for the purpose of keeping things unbiased, um, I will leave their name out of this video because it's a complete growing guide and, and a lot of people watch these and I don't necessarily um, want to throw them under the bus because it could have been a mistake as well. Um, so uh, pretty much we just go with, um, with uh, Bonnie's plants have excellent, excellent uh, grown plants. Um, we've gone with those in the past, um, but also uh, as far as you know, good supplier, um, Jung Seeds uh, sells these. That's where we got these dormant ones, and uh, also very, very good. Um, pretty much price-wise, is you're going to get about uh, 25 plants for 9.99, and you really can't beat that. So that's a great that's a great deal as well. Um, but but find your supplier that works. Um, you know, check around, check reviews. Certainly, um, everyone has their two cents to put in. And I am, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not brand loyal to anybody. Um, I just I care for quality, um, and I've had good luck with both of those. So Bonnie's plants. If you want to go with live plants, you can find those at Lowe's and Home Depot already sprouted um, and kind of in soil, uh, and then um, the dormant ones. Now I do say, typically, uh, well, I mean, this is pretty much a guaranteed thing. Uh, they will be cheaper if you get them from dormant plants than if you get them from uh, you know the greenhouse. You'll typically get four to six plants uh, for maybe $4 versus, uh, versus 25 plants for 10. So uh, definitely a good deal to go with dormant. Um, but dormant, you will have some that don't come back. So there's that risk as well involved. Um, now, when you get your dormant plants, you want to make sure that you soak them in water. I just took the whole bag and just dunked it into a big bucket of water overnight. Uh, and, and I let the roots just soak in that water to hydrate the roots. Um, and so that way the, the roots are really well and hydrated and they're going to come out of dormancy uh, more quickly. Um, another thing that you want to make sure of is that there's absolutely no crown rot. Now crown rot um, would be something that, that would occur um, if, the, if the grower had uh, put the plant, had held the plants up too high. Um, I always check for that because it's a, it's a mistake that they would make and it's a mistake that uh, shouldn't be your fault. So make sure you check out for that. And one way you can see if they have crown rot is by simply, if, well, if there's green growth, they don't have crown rot. If there's just, uh, if there's nothing coming out like this one right here, I'll give it a squeeze. If the rhizome is firm and there's no white kind of uh, pus coming out, it's not really pus, but um, if it's like a white, like a white goop kind of coming out, you have crown rot. It's quite firm, so it's most likely just a rhizome that has not come out of dormancy yet. But check for that because you shouldn't be buying something that uh, you know is is their fault. It's very common, but you still shouldn't be paying for 25 plants and only get you know only get 22 or 23 plants. Um, so I always check for that. Um, that's the first thing I do when I take them out of the box. I soak them in water, and then what I do is I prepare my soil. 
to, uh, strawberries are some of your heaviest feeding plants, um, and I almost said tomatoes for some reason because I guess they probably take up about as much nutrients as tomatoes do. Um, I feed them such high nitrogen that uh, pretty much for the first year, I will give them nothing but nitrogen to boost the plant up. I don't worry about flowering. I don't worry about fruit. If they do fruit and flower, that's great, but that's not my objective for the first year. My first my first and foremost objective is to get the plant up to size so that it can fruit heavily the next year. And to, the only way to do that is to give it high nitrogen. We give all of our plants Trifecta Plus and I will feed each plant a quarter cup of Trifecta. And that feeds them for the whole season. Let's get back to the bed here. Let's plant them up because there's a very important way you want to plant your crowns so that you don't have crown rot and also so that they can come out of dormancy a little bit better for you. Come on, let's go. All right, so we're going to dig our holes here. We wanna space our plants about a foot apart, not super close, but oftentimes I think people give them uh, insane amounts of spacing. And I kind of wonder why, because uh, they do send out runners. Yes, this is true, but the plant itself does not get much bigger than around, you know, uh, probably a foot in diameter. So really by spacing it out, 11 to 12 inches, you're going to be A-OK. -okay. So in this bed right here, I'm going to be able to plant four, four of these plants and um, in, this, in a row here. So what you want to do to eliminate crown rot, so you don't do it because it is very easy to do, is make sure that you hold the plant when you backfill because if, it goes, if the plant goes way down here in the hole, what you're going to do is you're going to have soil come up onto the crown and that is what causes crown rot. Uh, strawberries are extremely susceptible. So what I always say is never, ever, ever plant them any deeper than where their roots begin. So you can see the roots begin right here. I will never plant any further up because that is exactly how you get crown rot. It just stresses the plant out and it'll eventually kill it because it, there's, there's no roots that are going to form up the plant. So the next thing I'll do is I will make sure I kind of uh, untangle the roots and fan them out in a radius so that you kind of have like a mop that you've just smashed on the floor. Um, a lot of times people plant them with all their roots really bunched up close together. Not a good strategy. Um, it's just not a good strategy at all. It uh, really is counterproductive to how these plants grow because uh, strawberry runners have a very shallow root system and they don't uh, I mean, they will go deep, but they prefer to go out rather than down. So that's just how they tend to grow. So that's the first one planted. And I'm going to plant up some more as we talk about some of their other needs. So when it comes to sunlight, we planted ours in a bed that gets right around 11 to 12 hours of sun. I tend to say you can't really give them too much sun um, because <laughs> strawberries are one of those plants that uh, if you give them too much sun, it would be a miracle. Um, I, I've never never quite heard of a, uh, a strawberry plant getting too much sun. So um, make sure they get at least five to seven hours and, and they'll do great. Um, now, as far as soil type goes, they love, because they're very, very hungry plants, they love a very nutrient dense, rich in organic matter soil. This also means that it's well draining so that they, so the roots can spread out very quickly. Um, and, uh, and you know what? I'm actually going to be able to only get three plants in here. I don't know what I was thinking. So um, I'm gonna get three plants in a row here uh, instead of four. So um, ignore my last comment about planting four plants in a row. Um, so, uh, yep. So we're going to get, we're going to get three plants in a row here and that's going to be totally fine. And so, uh, the soil, just make sure it's really loose, really well draining that we, uh, don't have any, any root rot or anything like that because they are very susceptible to rot. Um, and then also make sure that, uh, it is a pH of seven. You don't want very acidic soil. You don't want very alkaline soil. Strawberries really do appreciate just a pH balanced soil. Um, so you can take up nutrients well, grow very well and be very strong for you. All right, so when it comes to watering, I just typically say, give them what your garden gets, which is about an inch of water a week. Um, and that's, 
uh, basically like if you took if you took a box if you took a box and took uh, took a, a square foot and one inch high and you filled that with water that's about how much water you should be giving them and so a 12 inch 12 inch square by 12 inch square by one inch high should hold right around a half gallon to uh, to three quarters of a gallon of water and so um, that's about how much I give them a week and they're really not super particular because they're they're quite hardy when it comes to uh, to drought tolerance but they also don't want to dry out either because you'll find that your your berries if you give them good water your berries will be nice and shiny and one way you can tell that they don't have enough water is if your berries have kind of a dull color um, if they don't have a good shine to the skin it means they're dehydrated um, and so that's a good rule of thumb to go by is how your berries look um, but also it's it's better to just make sure they have enough water in the beginning than to get your fruit and say oh i'm not i'm clearly not giving them enough water uh, so so i go by that rule of of an inch of water a week and your your fruit or your fruit production is going to be far far superior um, than if you than had you let it dry out Oftentimes, your strawberries in the fall will produce runners, which are additional plants. I always recommend pruning off your runners in the fall. Now, oftentimes people say, well, why, why not prune them off in the spring? Because they're going to be on the mother plant. They're going to be able to survive through the winter better and, uh, and then fruit in the spring for you. This is true. This is absolutely true. However, you'll find that oftentimes those runners will suck that energy away from the mother plant. And the mother plant will be the plant that dies. And then you'll have just kind of miscellaneous plants that might have survived. Um, I always stress cutting the, the runners in the fall and then transplanting them. And the ones that survive, great, but I guaranteed have a very healthy stock of mother plants that are going to produce year after year and produce uh, very well for me. And finally, the last thing that I want to do is I want to, after three years, replace the strawberries. So that's where I'm going to take those runners, move them over to a new bed, and prep the, uh, the kind of the, the next generation of strawberries. Because after about three or four years, your strawberry production will just drop. It happens. Um, so what you want to do is uh, just kind of keep that in mind and at about two years, three years, start taking your runners to prepare for when you pull these out of the ground. Um, and that way you can always have a very steady production of, of strawberries. So that's all there is to growing strawberries. Um, hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully uh, you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll see you later. Bye.